good evening everyone admits this pandemic IEEE continues to stay connected with its students by organizing such exciting events and to increase our IEEE family KLSGIT student branch has organized this IEEE R in collaboration with IEEE Bangalore section I Pratigny Ajwan faculty mentor student branch membership development committee KLSGIT Bayadami Welcome my allied speaker for the R, Mr. Shailesh Sakre, Chair, Signal Processing Society, Bangalore. I would also place my welcome to our organizing team, Soma, Chengappa, uh, Harshita, and Tanishka, and each one of you present here. Over to you, Soma, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. Um, so I will just begin this uh, uh, quickly. We will uh, start the session without wasting much of your time. Um, I'm so happy to be here with all the, uh, the entire team of KLS. Uh, um, and um, I thank them for giving us this opportunity to be present here with them. And I also thank the speaker, Dr. Sakri. We will very quickly move on to the topic of today, Unwinding Alexa. But before that, um, uh, I will just uh, quickly walk you, walk all of you through the IEEE, what it is, and I won't take much of your time, just 10 to 15 minutes, but uh, we'd like to just uh, let you know that what are the benefits of membership for IEEE, especially from the student per perspective. So uh, I will just uh, share my screen. Um, So um, IEEE, as you all know, it ha it was uh, founded by the great some of the great scientists and uh, pioneers in um, uh, technology. The founder members of IEEE, which was originally known as American Institution for Engineers, the founder members were in 1884 uh, Alexander Graham Bell, Tesla. And uh, in fact, even Thomas Alva Edison was also the uh, one of the team members of IEEE. And uh, this prestigious organization is a recognized global leader in fostering world in changing technology. And as you all are aware that IEEE is uh, instrumental in giving some very, very uh, good standards. Uh, some standards are extremely popular, like the one which we just can't do without in our day-to-day -day usage, which is the IEEE 802.11 ABGN, or which we also call as Wi-Fi. Likewise, there are so many other standards which are being used in the technology world and which for which IEEE, um, we should be uh, like, you know, we, uh, we should be thankful to IEEE for letting us use these standards in an unlicensed manner, which means that we don't have to pay any, um, anything to IEEE as a uh, as a license fees or as a uh, as a royalty for using these standards so which is one great thing so IEEE at a glance I will just give you an idea of the numbers in the across the world we have 450,000 members in 160 countries and 50% of whom are outside the United States so which means that we are amongst those 50% outside the United States. And there are 1,25,000 student members. We have 334 sections and 10 geographic regions in the whole world. And then IEEE has 2,116 chapters, which contribute for the local membership. And then there are 3,005 student branches at colleges and universities in over 100 countries. There are also 1,000 481 student branch chapters of IEEE Technical Society. 
we also have 486 affinity groups so by affinity groups we mean that the societies are not formed on the basis of some technology skill but they are formed on the basis of the uh, the memberships which are constituting that society like for example we have women in engineering to promote more number of uh, uh, women participation in the stem areas we have young professionals, IEEE young professionals to promote the youngsters who have just joined their jobs and who want mentoring and who want handholding. For them, it is an excellent opportunity to be a part of IEEE young professional group. We have IEEE life member group and also IEEE entrepreneurship group. So we have wide variety of affinity groups besides the technological chapters. The organization structure, I will just want to give you, I won't get into the huge details, but a simple idea that the ent entire IEEE globally is divided into 10 geographic regions. And then these regions are further divided into various sections on the basis of the cities. And then under the section comes the student branch. Like for example, in our case, we are uh, you are a student branch which is falling under IEEE Bangalore section and IEEE Bangalore section falls under IEEE India Council. India Council, IEEE India Council falls under the IEEE Region 10. So this is one simple idea, although it is not as simple, but just want to give you one idea of what is the structure. So let me tell you that Every single, uh, this is a peer-to-peer -peer hierarchy, so please don't think that there is some order coming or there is some master-slave relationship. This is just one organization structure. But everybody has ex absolutely equal opportunity and equal say and equal uh, weightage of vote or speaking or giving their opinion. So there is no, uh, like, you know, organization, like in incorporated structure, no, no. It is not that kind of hierarchy. It's just a kind of structure which can be followed for a little more, like, you know, more uh, orderly manner. This is the IEEE today's homepage. If you can see, this is the, you will get an access. So being a member, you can always go to your IEEE homepage. And this is one, uh, it will allow you to get into any kind of latest and greatest technologies, including there will be topics, blogs, and uh, discussions available, various threads available on Topics like blockchain, uh, in Internet of Things, uh, artificial intelligence, and so on and so forth. This is my homepage of IEEE Collaborative. So as a IEEE member, you get to be a part of this social networking uh, uh, website. And here you can connect, collaborate, and work with uh, all IEEE member, uh, members across the globe, irrespective of any country. So this is extremely good for those students who want to reach out or go for higher studies abroad. They can actually connect to various college professors and uh, communities in the especially the universities where you are looking uh, seeking uh, admission so this is one very good thing for uh, student members then we have IEEE explore digital library where you can get uh, there are like you can see over here the number of items is right there uh, in front of you so there are around uh, uh, 46 lakhs wow so there are 46 lakh papers available here for your search. So this is one thing. Um, then uh, we, we once you become IEEE member, you get free access to IEEE Spectrum magazine. And uh, it contains the latest uh, articles and latest technologies available in the area of communications, computer science. Then uh, we have various IEEE technical communities and councils. And most of these are uh, you can be a member and there are no charges, uh, especially for student members. We have IEEE TV where various channels are there on different different technologies. You can be uh, you can subscribe to the channel and have, an, have a look at the videos. So you can be a part of this IEEE TV as soon as you become member. Then uh, there is a, a special IEEE Center for Leadership Excellence. This is especially to promote the leadership qualities among IEEE volunteers for mentoring of the volunteers and for personality development of volunteers. So this is also another very good site which will be available to you. 
then of course you you i have already told you about ieee standards association and the sister organization ieee standards university so this about this i have already given you an idea so it is uh, mainly in charge of uh, taking care of all the ieee standards which are un under the draft or which are finalized and have been released so there are different stages of uh, uh, standard in which initially there it is proposed then there is a draft committee working on it and then finally the standard is released so all these it is published so all these stages it is taking care of the ieee standards association and standards university deals with the certification courses on these standards then um, most importantly so what is the direct benefit to the students apart from these benefits which i have already told you especially for students there are a lot of things lined up from ieee there is ieee extreme which is a programming competition specially meant for students student branch awards are there then scholarship grant and fellowships only for students are there then of course student voting is there in ieee election plus you are you can be a part of a society and affinity group without any charges especially i have listed out some societies for you which are totally free for student members like we have the site which is for humanitarian technology women in engineering young professionals data engineering community rfid community census council internet of everything gis community all these communities so many there is a long and endless list which will be available to you totally free of cost and plus you have a huge amount of resources available like uh, the ieee resume lab then you also get from google apps there is a tie up of ieee so if you have a gmail id you can actually get a proxy id which leads to your gmail id like in my case it is soma.pandey@ieee.org so likewise you can also get your own uh, um, domain with ieee domain your own email id so this looks pretty impressive especially for your resume and then you have ieee resume lab which is which gives a beautiful layouts and very nice ideas to make your resumes i strongly recommend all of you to check it out then we have a huge list of humanitarian programs especially meant for students and then uh, of course the magazines i have already spoken to you the three magazines potential spectrum and institute they are available to you then student travel grants are also there from ieee under which uh, students are selected and given of course in this time of pandemic uh, most of the events of ieee the conferences and symposiums they are all virtual and online but uh, um, i am very hopeful that soon the pandemic time will be over in that case the students are selected and they are given uh, fully paid travel grants to go and participate in ieee events which are happening globally especially the flagship events so this is another one benefit for the students plus uh, there are a huge amount of education and career resources for meant for students at a at deep discounts like you know you will be able to participate for various certification courses and for students members they are very very uh, low in cost so this ieee resume lab that i have already told you so you can just go and check it out it's really nice and apart from the resume lab there are some other things that we do we are recently going to con conduct a mock interview um, uh, 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 divya madam is leading that initiative and uh, um, we are conducting series of mock interviews uh, from our uh, mdc plus lot of other things are also events are happening which cover the skill assessment of students the portfolio uh, we also uh, help in providing the video resume of students so like this there are a lot of uh, membership benefits especially meant for students and for your career enhancements and how can you get involved in ieee because why you should get involved in ieee first of all so i i ask every one of you to volunteer in ieee because the kind of confidence and the personality building that you get through volunteering that kind of you know leadership qualities you will not get and you will not get anywhere else in the world so in ieee students are nurtured mentored so that they can contribute to the full their fullest put potential in such a way that even their own personality gets developed and it is extremely valuable for their future future career uh, enhancements so that's all from my side um i hope i haven't taken much of your time 
um, we can. Um, so with this, I wind up my talk on uh, membership benefits for uh, and I ask all the student members here. I hope all of you are already IEEE members. If you are not, I request all of you to be a part of IEEE and you're most welcome to be a part of it. So with this, I hand over to uh, 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 Dr. Chingappa. Uh, solution, he is solution architect in HP Enterprise and he is co-chair with us in IEEE Bangalore section. So Dr. Chengappa, kindly introduce the speaker and uh, take over the stage. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Soma, ma'am. Um, on uh, behalf of IEEE Bangalore section, uh, IEEE Member Development Committee and uh, IEEE Bangalore SPMDC, um, I deem it uh, my pleasure to invite uh, today's speaker, uh, Mr. Shailesh Sakri. Uh, who has uh, 20 years of industrial experience uh, in the field of audio signal processing uh, with around four approved patents and some more in the pipeline. Uh, he has worked in capacity of director of audio algorithms in NALS, formerly uh, Audience Inc., mm -hmm. and manager in Amazon Lab 126. During this period, Shailesh uh, worked on noise suppression and eco cancellers, which were adopted into major smartphones like Apple, Samsung, Xiaomi, LG, OnePlus, and so on. Mr. Silesh has uh, was the backbone of the uh, audience when it became the number one supplier of noise suppression chipsets in the industry. Silesh worked in Amazon Lab 126 and was leading the team which delivered industry's leading smart speaker products, the Echo series. He was the lead for delivering the Echo Show, Echo Spot, Echo Show 5, and Echo Show 8 series of products along with Amazon's first premium eco products user, uh, which had a user rating of uh, as, as one of the most superior audio devices. Silesh was also responsible for delivering the eco dot, which is Amazon's leading Alexa device with close to 100 million devices sold worldwide and which has a user rating of 4.2 uh, uh, ratings uh, uh, upon five. So currently, Silesh is working in Herman International as Senior Engineering Manager for the DSP team, responsible for delivering car audio solutions like ANC, road noise cancellation, vehicle noise com um, uh, compensation, audio equalizer, surround sound audio, and other audio features mm -hmm. to major car uh, audio manufacturers worldwide. In tandem, uh, Mr. Silesh Sakri is also Chair of IEEE Signal Processing Society Bangalore Chapter. So with this brief introduction, I would now hand over the virtual podium uh, to uh, Mr. Silesh uh, uh, for the session. Sir, over to you. Thank you, Shangapa. Can you guys, can you all hear me? Yes, yes. yes sir. Yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, somehow I'm not able to share. I am just uh, providing you the access. You should be oh. able to do it. Yep. Oh, thank you. Okay, can you all see my screen? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. Yeah, thank you everyone uh, for uh, giving me an opportunity to share with you all uh, some of the experience that I've had while um, building the Alexa devices, which everyone are familiar with. So, um, Changapa reached out to me and uh, he requested, um, can, can you talk something about Alexa and uh, uh, to the student community? So I was a bit uh, uh, shocked and I started thinking about what should I present because uh, when I say Alexa, this is a big, it's it's a pretty big, all the device is small, you might see, but there's a lot of features in there. There's a lot of things uh, that goes on inside uh, the Alexa. So uh, what I'm going to, I'm, right now, as you all know, I'm not working in Amazon. Uh, I cannot reveal most of the details, whatever. Uh, uh, so. I'll try to uh, book. I will go in detail, talk about that verbally, but I'll have to refrain myself and go in details. Um, it's Amazon's uh, proprietary information. Okay, so I have to be cautious about that. Okay, all right. So, um, uh, what do we? Um, okay, so. Um, now that we are all locked at uh, home, I'm I'm pretty sure uh, 
if you all have the echo device at home there are many things that um, you might uh, you might be playing around with those alexa devices like you might be asking these questions like alexa ask sanjeev kapoor recipes how are we prepared okay uh, changapa do you want me to share the video my video is, or it's okay uh, you you can do that sir yeah or uh, if i think if there is um, um, I, I think you can proceed in the audio mode uh, seems like that could yeah. be some issues with the bandwidth uh, so that sure. is fine no, sure. yeah. yeah let's let's go with this one. okay so then uh, i mean uh, you might ask some of these there are various skill sets available in alexa it's um, so some of them i have listed out over here so you can say alexa open rajin khan jokes and you can say alexa play yoga nidra you can say alexa open healing music alexa start bhagavad gita alexa turn on hallway light okay you can do a lot of automation over there alexa ask hacker to turn on ac so the possibilities is n number of possibilities so every uh, there is a form factor there is a alexa device for every every any kind of use cases there's a switches over there there's a uh i mean bedroom devices over there there's a hall devices there's a dining table devices so the whole concept when alexa was built in uh, was to make sure that i mean uh, you are reachable to alexa you are reachable to amazon uh, at any point anywhere uh, in your i mean uh, even when you are sitting in a car also you should be able to uh, you should be able to interact with um, uh, any of the um, Uh, amazon services okay so alexa was built for the whole purpose of a uh, voice interaction okay with any of the amazon services there are many services like amazon has amazon video i mean everyone uses the prime videos right so amazon videos you have the amazon music there's not just amazon music there's many other music apps which are integrated along with the uh, alexa with, with the echo devices so what is an alexa alexa is uh, an virtual assistant uh, based on the ai technology which was uh, developed by amazon so alexa is not the only one there are other um, uh, similar kind of virtual assistant devices the google home is there apple pods are there so there are various but i, I believe these are the three popular ones and among among everything uh, amazon has a fleet of lot of devices for each and every use cases and this is by far the most popular uh, devices uh, this uh, which is a uh, voice enabled device i would say uh, in the market okay and uh, um, so you have the echo smart speakers the echo dots the amazon studio which is a very lead uh, which was released last year then you have the amazon tap speakers so all these things were developed by amazon lab 126 um, so as i said it's it's a capable of any of the voice interaction music playbacks you can do to do list uh, you can set alarms you can stream the podcast you can play the audio books uh, you can it can provide the weather information it can provide the traffic information sports any other real time information like even the news also so as soon as you wake up you can uh, you can say that alexa please um the whole purpose was uh, you get used to alexa and even in the back end okay like amazon has its newspaper called the washington post which is a subscribed one so when you subscribe to it it will uh, keep giving you updated information so amazon music is also subscribed so, so the whole purpose was um, get used to all Amazon's ecosystem. Okay, Alexa, Alexa device. What does it mean? So Alexa is not just in the Echo device; it is also among the third-party device. There are many other uh, third-party devices which um, which has Alexa enabled in it. That's why I'm calling this as a Alexa-enabled devices rather than a uh, Echo device. Okay, so how does it work? So again, as I was saying, as which song is it? What song is it? It's everything. 
Now let's understand what are the technologies involved in it. So uh, here are uh, the different Amazon devices. Every year, Amazon comes up with one or the other. These, um, uh, these, these are the Amazon Echo Buds, which uh, uh, was, uh, they released uh, another Echo Buds, which has surpassed, which uh, uh, most of the reviewers are saying that it's beating the AirPods. So the quality is, so when I was there, we were still at the verge of um, comparing with a lot of other vendors and we had uh, a bit away from it, but there were uh, many hardware technologies. I mean, uh, the way how mic seating works, how other uh, speaker, um, some of the, uh, he, I mean, hearing speakers inside it, uh, there was an improvement. So many things, then this is a, a three, I mean, uh, this is a echo boom we used to call internally. So this is a echo studio. So which is a 360 of the first 360 degree, uh, which is an immersive sound audio quality that you get of the devices. Okay. So this is a new alarm based devices, which uh, supersedes the Echo Dot, which is a new kind of Echo Dot device. Okay. So tear down details on the Echo device. So there are um, different devices. I picked up only a few of them uh, to show uh, what it means and uh, so as you can see over here so there are uh, some buttons over here which are the action buttons there's a microphone mute button there's a volume button so there beneath that you have um, i mean on top of that there's a seven microphone array so there is a it's a circular microphones so there are some devices which are circular in nature there are some devices which are the 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 display devices so in short, what you can call is that there is a uh, segregation uh, in terms of the devices. Uh, the devices which doesn't have a display are called the headless devices. And uh, the devices which have um, the display are called multimodal devices. Reason is that you are interacting with the device. Uh, there's a touch screen also in it. Okay, So you have interaction with the touch screen as well as um, with the voice interaction. Okay, that's why it's a multimodal. So it's called the multimodal device. So you have a hearables. So there's an echo device even for the auto. So automotive desk. So that is called the echo auto. Okay, so there are different uh, uh, segregations in it, the kind of uh, where you use it. Okay, and this is an echo, uh, echo series, which is a, uh, the first kind of uh, speak, um, a smart speaker which was released. Uh, in fact, this is the second gen. The first one was the much taller one. This is a second one. So as you can see over here, there's a uh, there's a woofer in here. There's a tweeter uh, just at the bottom over here. There's a 2.5 inch speaker, so which is uh, upward firing, and there's a tweeter. And uh, then you have a, this is an Echo Studio, which is a newly one. So as you can see over here, there's a left firing speakers. Okay, then there's a downward firing woofer. Okay. And uh, so it is an, um, encapsulated with the metallic over here. Then there's a base over here, okay, to maximize the output. So that's why you get that 360 degree kind of effect because it's uh, down firing and it creates even a kind of boom effect. Uh, that's why internally we used to call it as a, it was named as echo boom. Okay. So uh, then there is a, a mid range speakers also in it. Okay. So for people who doesn't know, uh, there are different kinds of speakers. One you call it as a full range speakers. So uh, usually in your cars or many of your systems, you might have seen a base system. There's a, uh, some of the tweeters. There's a, some of uh, uh, the mid frequency, the I mean the high frequency speakers also. Uh, typically, when you design a, a speaker, it's very hard to give. Uh, I mean, uh, do justice to all the three uh, three sections. The low frequencies, the mid frequencies, and the high frequencies. Okay, because you try to uh, bring up, I um, mean, make uh, the bass very good, then at the same time, you might end up compromising the mid frequencies. Okay, that's why, uh, I mean, the speaker designers know it very well. It's really hard to design a full range speaker, which can give a justice, do a justice to all these three, the treble, the bass, the high frequencies, everything. Okay, so that's why, okay, um, earlier, I mean, there used to be a woofer which used to, it, which was kind of a, a full range speakers, then um, 
Uh, Amazon started in introducing the passive radiators for creating more base effect. Then there were multiple speakers, which uh, then they started introducing because uh, people started demanding, okay, I need a better sound. I need a better sound. Okay, then they started introducing, then they introduced these mid-range speakers, which can only cover the mid-range, and then there's a bass, which can give most bass effect. Okay, so, uh, and then in terms of some of the uh, board inside it, uh, there are uh, TI chipsets, there are LEDs over here, so as you can see over here, so there are seven LEDs. So based on how the user talks, it will show which direction the user is, um, user is talking from. Since it's a circular microphone, it has seven microphone with the circular microphone array. So it's a it has a 360 degree effect. The user can uh, talk from anywhere. It's omnidirectional. Okay, anywhere, and then they should be able to the echo device should be able to receive the person who is talking. And in fact, we used to th use this as an indication to really I mean see if the LEDs are working or no. And, so sometimes, I mean, if you place these devices near the wall, it gets confused. You know that's the case. That's quite common because there are some reflections and it will get confused. Okay. Then let's get into a uh, 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 little bit internals. How does Alexa work? Okay, this is at a very top level uh, hardware side. But if I talk about uh, just a hardware on how all these devices are built, it has, I mean, I'll tell you, each one of them, if I start picking up and start talking about, it will take an hour to uh, talk about it. Like uh, even the fabric that you see on, on top of these devices, which became very popular. So in the earlier devices, there was there were no fabric on top of this. So this is uh, when Google, Google was the one who started introducing fabric uh, to some of those devices, and it looked very elegant for the users. And it kind of gave a, a very nice aesthetics, which is a user experience uh, to the uh, users. So even while selecting a fabric, there's a lot of um, uh, science behind it. I mean, we have to go and choose what is the impedance uh, to it, because when when you start, when it starts playing it, okay, it should not burst, right? So it should, yeah, I mean, because it's emitting the air over there, it should not be blocking the air. What is the kind of fabric you use? So literally, we literally evaluated around 120 fabric material. Okay, and what we did was that there were a lot of mockups that was done by wrapping around different fabrics based on the different dependencies. Okay, and coming up, then measuring it everything to make sure that there is no, uh, there is no throt. I mean, there is no buzzing effect on the devices because it's when you divide. I mean, when you design the device, it's very important when it is playing a very heavy sound, okay, the device should not shake. The device should not, shouldn't make any buzzing effect, right? So uh, there's a mechanical um, a design involved in it. How well, how tightly you can couple everything together. Okay, it's on top of that, there's always challenges in how do you mount all these microphones? How tightly you can, uh, fix these microphones in it. So as you can see over here, if you, in this board I'm showing, so there are microphones here. So these are LEDs. So there are microphones embedded. So I hope you are seeing my cursors. So there are microphones embedded over here. But when you take some of the devices like this Echo Show, okay, you have a very small bezel over here. Okay, this only, uh, this is a four microphone array. Uh, okay, hold on, no, no, this is a two microphone array, I guess, okay. So now you have, a, uh, so there was an Echo Show 10 also, which had just a four microphone array. Now, how are you going to do it? Then you had two microphone, which is drilled through the hole of the display. There's one, two more microphones and the bezel. So I hope you understand what's the bezel. It's a thin edge, which, uh, which glues together the, the, uh, the behind surface and the display surface. Okay, so that bezel you have, and you had only very small area over there where you can put in some of those microphones. And just to, I mean, uh, uh, to test how well those microphones are glued together, I mean, we used to spend a lot of hours to make sure that there's no problem with those um, sealing of those microphones. We call it as a microphone sealing. Okay, so there's a separate testing on to make sure that every device, so in fact, every, uh, so in the uh, manufacturing line, 
every device is tested to ensure that there is there is a proper sealing and it gets tested at the factory line um, and there's a, what they do is that they close this and then they open it and then the measure okay audio so there's a lot of audio testing technology which is involved in when they screen each one of those devices and when it comes to the hearables you have other different challenges because how are you going to um, you have to mock up the uh, the human uh, face in the factory line where it gets inserted over there and you get a coupling over there and so this and these are like a free devices which are in the free air far field devices but these hearables are different so the testing challenges is the production line are different because the customers might complain that oh i can't hear this oh how do you ensure that the microphones are working fine when it gets glued onto these uh, some of those devices so many challenges the production line the design line just putting together everything over here so it looks very simple on top of that but there's a lot of a uh, um, lot of science that goes on when you design this okay and put together and this is one of what i'm talking about is just hardware uh, challenges okay let me talk about some of the software challenges okay now how alexa works so alexa uh, is uh, built on uh, the natural language processing uh, technology uh, which is a procedure of converting a speech into words sounds and ideas so what echo device does so echo device records your words uh, indeed it interprets the sounds uh, it takes up with a lot of computational power that's why all this uh, what happens is that all this uh, um, speech all this has gets uploaded to the cloud and in the cloud there's alexa service which does um, all the analysis based on the analysis it responds back on action what needs to be done okay so it's a loopback mechanism it's not a totally everything a local based uh, for any echo device to run you need to have an internet enabled to it okay this becomes a uh, internet enabled devices in your home so in short how i mean uh, what goes on inside the echo device so in inside the echo device i would say there are uh, three parts to it uh, in terms of the software side so the first one what we call it as audio front end the second portion is a wake word detection the third one is we push the speech into the cloud so what does uh, audio front end mean so audio front end uh, so it gives alexa as many chances as possible to make sense of the audio by uh, cleaning up some of the signal so the wake word engines that we usually design okay although they are kind of robust to some of the noise they do uh, build um, to make sure that they put in all the noise profiles also build it but it is still sensitive to some of those uh, uh, some of the uh, noise also so since this is a speaker involved in it there's an echo factor that comes in because there's a uh, where there's a speaker which and there's a microphone and uh, when you're playing you want to uh, when you say alexa so you might have seen it it just ducks down the volume so it comes the song that you're playing it ducks down so that happens uh, due to the audio front end uh, which is in uh, which is in the device okay what it does it there's a uh, sort of a front end canceller over there and then there's a beam forming algorithm okay which cleans up the speech that comes from the mic and then it sends out to the wake word engine okay and then the wake word engine uh, then uh, if if it is an echo or uh, if it is an alexa or any other keyword i mean typically it's alexa there are there, there are three keywords i guess which is you, which you can configure it you can call alexa you can use echo or you can use amazon okay so alexa is a very default keyword which is uh, uh, i mean very popularly used and that's a default one and uh, when you detect it now people might be wondering why do you need that keyword okay can you not have a device which can just uh, you give a command and it will start talking about okay instead of saying alexa play the music you can you say that hey play the, play the music it should pick up but see uh, the problem with that is that uh, i mean uh, you want to have a very secured one you i mean um, there's a lot of conversation you go you do in the um, in the hall in your room or wherever so you want to make sure i mean that 
the device only listens to the following subsequent commands after that. That's why it's called the keyword, which is a wake word engine. Wake word um, we also talk about. Okay. So uh, how does uh, audio front end works? Okay. So here's a, a general uh, system which is so it's an indicator. There's a ambient noise over here. You can have the fans. You can have any of the noises within. It can have a kitchen noise. You can have so different kind of noise that you can have it in, in um, at home or you can have it in a car also, okay? So although you, uh, I mean, uh, when you're speaking about it, Alexa, play this, it's a very, very simple use case. Why? Because there's no speakers over there. You're not playing anything. So that becomes a very, very simple use case. There's nothing over here. So audio friend and, uh, I mean, even if there is a, some noise over here, it cleans up something, processes, and just sends it to the, Wakeboard engine. Okay. So, um, what I can call is that there's a, a multi channel microphone. So, microphone array is there. There's a multi channel acoustic also that gets introduced over here because there are multiple speakers which goes to multiple microphones. Okay. So, it's not like one speaker and my one microphone. That's a much simpler use case. So, people who have worked on the echo cancellers or who are aware of uh, echo canceller, they understand the challenges which are involved over here because. Uh, what happens is that the speaker, this, this, um, uh, the audio is emitting from each one of these speakers and it, it's hitting each one of these microphones. You just don't know which, uh, 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 which speaker is emitting these kind of, everything will get mixed up. Okay. And then you get, what you get is that the summation of everything in there mixed up, right? It's like, uh, uh, mixing up the rice with the seven kinds of different dals or whatever. You don't even know what kind of dal it is. Now, what audio front end does is that it has to clean up everything and it has to extract the rice from it, right? So that's the kind of challenge you have. Okay. And uh, this is the most complex part, the, which is the front end, and it's one of the heart of the uh, echo device. Okay. Uh, Continuing with this, so internally what it does is that um, uh, it's a software block level, the audio front end. So there is a pre-processing. So the pre-processing happens at a uh, sub-band levels. Okay, so there's a sub-band processing uh, with the pre-emphasis filters and there's a delay correction so there also. And uh, followed by there's a spatial processing. So what do you mean by spatial processing? So there's a spatial filters which are called uh, the um, beam forming algorithms. So since I, I was showing over there, there's a circular microphone. So what it does is that there's a beams that gets formed. Uh, there's a circular beams that gets formed. So based on where the user from which direction the user is talking about. Okay. So uh, that beam will become dominant and rest of the beams are being uh, neglected and only that beam is selected and sent over here. So that's what is called the source of localization and tracking, where the user direction are being tracked and based on that is an algorithm called the direction of arrival. So there are various ways by, by which you can determine from which direction the user is talking. Okay. And you can did and then you can pick up that dominant beam and select it. And then uh, post that there will be a post filtering which will clean up this and selection. There's a selection what kind of beam you're selecting, and then it goes to synthesis because it's again a beam uh, where you have uh, done, you have transformed that into from uh, the time domain to the frequency domain. Everyone might be aware of the discrete Fourier transforms, right? So there is a, a, a DTFT that goes on over here, which uh, which is done on a at a block level, and then post that there is a synthesis, and after that it goes to the wake world engine, okay? And uh, this loopback goes on over here. <coughs> so it, you can see over here. So there's a music uh, that goes on here and then there's a speech which get mixed up. So that's, uh, you can have anything. So before going to the um, rendering it to the speaker, there's a reference uh, output which gets into the system because this is where you tap. Once you go over here, okay, you don't have any control. So these are all analog domain and this is still a digital domain. Okay, but what you get hit over there at the microphone level is uh, the speech plus the music. And since you have a reference channel over here, 
so anyone who have, who understands echo cancellers might understand that uh, so the echo canceller for echo cancellation you need uh, the some of the reference channel to cancel out the echo okay whatever you are seeing it on the microphone there are even more challenging uh, challenging cases where this is the most simpler case there are some of the echo device the echo dot you also have uh, you can have an output bluetooth device like the echo dot is not as powerful as uh, the echo studio or some other uh, smart speakers so but you still want an alexa enabled so there is a provision which is given where you can using a line out or a external bluetooth you can connect to another dumb uh, bluetooth speaker okay so that becomes your complete smart speaker so your echo dot is an alexa enabled device which is connected to the another bluetooth device now just imagine over here the both are running at a two different clocks okay now how are you going to cancel out the echoes and then process so that is another uh, uh, very challenging case and that also has been solved in echo dot okay this is a um, and uh, the, that is called uh, i don't want to get into the details of it because it's a patented one so uh, those are the challenging examples over there where uh, um, uh, the the uh, asynchronous which is a uh, which is running at two different clocks where there is no reference signal also still you will have to do some of the echo cancellation okay and it does very perfect job the echo dot okay all right uh, then after uh, the audio front end uh, what i was saying about that so you can see over here so there is a so after this it goes to the wakeward engine over here right so what happens in the wakeward engine so it's a uh, there are i mean some of the technologies over there uh, keeps changing okay when i was there there is a uh, there's a very conventional uh, kind of wakeward system with which was based on the log metal filter bank okay and which was uh, the HMM based and uh, um, so there is uh, I mean LFBA then you do the normalization then uh, you do the global mean variance normalization so and then it goes to the wakeward task okay so there is a wakeward engine over here which detects um, what kind of I mean whether there is a uh, I mean the, the proper keyword is there or not once it is detected uh, it goes to the uh, it is uh, treated as an ASR task okay uh, so there was there has been um, latest enhancement when I was there there was some work going on uh, looks like after I quit uh, they did release it that's what I got to know so that's why I thought of um, just introducing it over here so they have introduced something called two stage uh, classifiers the first stage is what it does is that there is a decoder so it ensures that um, the wake word that you have said is indeed a, um, a correct wake word okay and then there is another level of wake detection that happens to ensure that it is indeed there was a, a wake word detection that happened. So, uh, what okay? What's the benefit of using this? Is that there are uh, two kinds of metrics uh, that are used in uh, the wake word detection. Uh, one you call it as a false rejection ratio. This is FRR, which uh, determines how well it is uh, the the opposite of that is a true positive okay one minus FR, frr is a true positive it's a, so if it is a, a, a zero percent frr means there's a hundred percent hundred percent detection okay so if it is a ten percent frr it means that ninety percent detection okay, someone is asking a question Okay, what is the question? Sorry, give me a sec. Uh, okay, no, sir. I think we can sir. continue. Yeah. We can sir. continue. Okay, we can take yeah. it at the end. At the end. Okay. Yeah. yeah, sure. Some. Okay, so uh, then you have uh, the false rejection ratio then you have the false accept ratio this is a key thing when we design any of the wakeward uh, wakeward models 
uh, how well uh, how well is it with the false accepts because you don't want your device to be waking up to any spurious noises or anything that you might be i mean conversing with uh, with any of your family members or the friend when you're sitting in a hall and suddenly the device wakes up okay then the, uh, alexa says sorry i didn't understand your command so it feels very awkward right so that is called the false false alarms okay so there is a i mean ideally you want to have zero false alarms that's how they design it but what happens is that when you design a zero false alarm there's always a tilt towards i mean uh, rejecting some of your commands also so uh, typically uh, the what this i mean uh, some of the metrics that is allowed is that uh, you can uh, have one false alarm for every 25 hours 24 hours okay so there are um, now i mean you want to design these wake word models there's a lot that goes on over here so you collect thousands i mean um, millions together of samples not even thousands millions together of samples okay there's a dedicated team in uh, amazon which is a, a data collection team called the data engineering team which uh, gets uh, alexa from um, various um, so you might have even observed uh, there are different um, you when you uh, enable the alex uh, the echo device you can configure it to the region wise so there are models which are tuned according to the regions okay like the us model is different the people the way how uh, us people say the alexa is different people found that the way how you pronounce alexa in us is different from uk and india or brazil or um, any of the european uh, nations the france people how they uh, say it or hungarian people how they say it everyone pronunciation is different so what they do is that they collect these samples okay from each one of these regions different regions and then they um, they generate the wake word models for each one of those regions and then uh, then it goes to the different i mean then it goes they develop those models and those models gets deployed to each one of those different regions so when you configure it it automatically download it it comes with a default engine but when you configure it there is a or the air update that happens and uh, then automatically those models gets updated over there and in that way uh, even you might have uh, i don't know if uh, anyone has noticed it uh, when we were i mean um, in the us in when we used to have a different uh, uh, the alexa uh, the alexa speaks in a different way when you configure it for the us when you configure it for the india so when you configure it for the uk okay it sounds like when it configured for that it sounds like a um, very pretty much indian kind of english okay when you configure it for the uk you, it sounds like a uk based so uh, even the alexa tone is different for each one of those regions okay um so then how does this analysis happen uh, so what we can call it is that there's a um, four levels i can say so one is uh, wake word. So once there is a, a wake word, then you uh, you are going to ask something after that. Alexa, daily horoscope about Taurus, right? So that's how you ask. So what happens internally? Wake word is treated as a wake word. So which says Alexa and we, it wakes up the device, okay? And it will put the Alexa in a listening mode. So you might see. How do you get that indication in the listening mode? You might see that LED light blinking over there. And it is true with not just with Alexa, this even the Google device and even with the, uh, the Apple devices also. And then you have the invocation name, which we call it as a skill. So user can use any combination of that invocation with an action. Okay, you can say that, um, so this is how the syntax is, Alexa, then you have the skills, then you have the voice-driven Alexa capabilities. You can say, Alexa, turn off the hallway light. Alexa, turn on my bedroom. Alexa, please um, increase my AC temperature. Okay. Uh, increase, that's an action. Okay. I'll talk about it, what happens during action also. So that Taurus over here is called an utterance. Okay. So utterances, what are utterances? Utterances are phrases the users will use when making a request to the Alexa. 
and uh, Alexa identify this identifies the user's intent uh, because in this whole um, order that you are placing over there, the intent is also very important. Okay, so basically, the utterance decide what the user want the Alexa to perform. Okay, because what you are doing is a say Alexa increase my AC temperature. Okay, increase is an action then AC temperature. That's that's what you intend to. Right now. So when you're talking about this, uh, I'm, I'm just uh, briefing about internally what it does and how do you distinguish between a wake word and utterance. OK, uh, so uh, in a, I mean, people uh, I mean, who are uh, designing some of the software, they might understand and uh, uh, some of the complications involved over here. So just imagine that someone will just say that Alexa. OK, it's a very short I mean, burst of speech. Right, so it is so that's why there is some pre roll over there. So the device should always be in a listening mode. And then once that is there, then you uh, utter this keyword, which is a wake word. Now, within this wake word, you have to put a markers. When did this start index happen? And when did this uh, start and stop index happen within this buffer? Because this is very important. Uh, if this index is not put in over here, okay, the subsequent command that you send over there, what's the weather? Okay, Alexa, what's the weather? So uh, you might miss up, miss uh, some of the utterances over there, right? So that's why this stop index is very crucial to put a marker within the buffer, okay? And there are all, I mean, there's a very nice algorithm which is written internally, which will, um, uh, which will, uh, clearly uh, demark this the, the, within the buffer and then uh, post that that is sent to the the ASR engine okay and this is a shared memory buffer and this this keeps on going okay and uh, in this way uh, i mean it either goes to the wake word engine or the uh, alexa voice service engine okay now how does alexa understands the user syntax Right, so Alexa, as I was saying, uh, Alexa voice services. Um, so the backend engine is called the Alexa voice services. Okay, so what it does is that it processes the response and uh, it identifies the user's intent, and then it makes the web service request to third-party server if required. Okay, if there is a, because uh, there are some things, although there are skills in there, but not everything goes to the Amazon's backend service. There are if there are some of the Amazon. Uh, services like Amazon Music or Prime Video or any other skills, so it goes to the Amazon service. So otherwise, it goes to the other services like Ecubi devices are there. So the Ecubi device it's a thermostat device where you can, uh, with your voice command, you can either I mean uh, increase the temperature or de uh, decrease the temperature uh, of your home. Okay, so that goes to the Ecubi server over there, and then it controls its own devices. So uh, what it does is that AVS uses the uh, a technique called, which is the natural language processing, and LP we call it as. Okay, so it uses that techniques to predict and provide a response of user's intent. And what's this? I'll briefly touch upon what's NLP. Okay, it's NLP is nothing but uh, it's a convergence of artificial intelligence and uh, computational uh, linguistics, uh, which will handle the interaction between machines and natural language of a human in which uh, uh, computers are entered uh, to an either analyze or understand or alter or generate natural language, okay? So NLP helps uh, computer machines to engage in uh, communication using natural human language in many forms, including but not limited to speech and writing. And once it converts, so once there is a speech recognition, whatever you're talking, uh, there is a, a speech content which is uh, uh, recognized in it, it sends to uh, this NLP engine, and it what it does is that it converts it into artificial language, which is like the speech recognition, and then it breaks up into which is called the parts of speech, okay, which can be a meaningful process to understand the meaning. So it's like so in a voice recognition, what you do is that is it this model compares each part of the waveform. It just literally breaks up into uh, each one of those portions. Again, what comes out and what comes after, and it's like a dictionary of waveforms to figure out what's being said. It's all a prediction, 
So you can start, is it a rainy or it's a sun walk, shop, clean? So uh, everything, so uh, this this is a HMA model, hidden Marco model. So in that way, there's a model that happens over here. So uh, what in short, what it does is that it tries to understand what you have said by taking the voice data, uh, breaking it down to a very small sample of particular uh, time duration. Mostly uh, it, it ranges between 10 to 20 milliseconds. Okay, it's a one frame up or two frames of data. And these data sets are further compared uh, to our prefect to speech to decode what you have said in each one unit of your speech. Okay, and what is the purpose? The purpose is to find a phoneme, okay, which is the smallest unit of the speech within what you are uttering. And then the machine looks at the series of such phonemes and then it statistically determines which is the most likely keywords and sentence that you would have spoken. And that's what I called about the intent, right? And then NLU gets to deeply understand each word where it tries to understand whether it is a noun or a verb. Okay, what is the tense use? So all this process is called the parts of speech tagging. Like take, for example, if, if we say that, Alexa, I need a flight and hotel in Paris from December 5 to 10. Okay, so then how if you break it up, what happens is that the flight is an intent. Okay, the need. Is what is the need? It's a hotel. You need a hotel. And where? It's in a Paris, which is the city. And what is the date? So it will tag it as a date. Okay. So there is a range. And what is the sentiment over there? It's a neutral kind of thing. So, I mean, based on how well you are saying, uh, how we are saying it. Right. So that's how uh, this is a very complex uh, processing that happens. And definitely you cannot do it within the device. That's why all this processing happens in the cloud. Okay, so uh, this is how uh, there are a lot of challenges, obviously, uh, when you're designing it, and this is how uh, it works end to end. And uh, I mean, one of the most, uh, I mean, difficult thing I would say still is a wake word, okay, because once you've cleared it, the device is in a very neutral state, okay, there's nothing else going on, okay. So, in short, what I would say is that with this uh, natural language understanding, uh, the computers, can uh, deduce what a speaker actually means and not just the words they say, okay? Basically, it, uh, it is what enables voice technology like Alexa to infer uh, that you're probably asking for a local weather forecast when you ask Alexa what it's like uh, uh, outside. So there's, a, uh, there's also a development that's going on, which is called a conversational uh, AI. Okay, so you, have, you might have a use case Let's assume that, um, let me take this use case that you, you ask Alexa, Alexa, can you please book a movie ticket? Okay, so you know the intent. So can you please book a movie ticket for so-and-so movie, okay, on so-and-so date, okay? You might say that um, then Alexa will wake up and, and it would say, I found these many theaters nearby you and these are the shows available, which, uh, which ticket you want to book, then you might respond back, say that I want to have this uh, this timing and I want to book four tickets. Then it might say you have four tickets in the front row, you have four tickets in the back row, mid row, so whatever. So then you will pick up, okay, I want the, uh, I want to book a tickets in the, uh, in the back seat row. Then, the uh, I mean, it comes back and asks questions. Do you want me to book a dinner for you? Then you might say, you might ask, yeah, sure, please go ahead. Then it will search for uh, restaurants nearby. Then um, it will, okay, what kind of cuisine you want? Then you'll say, I want these cuisines. Okay, you want to book a table for how many people? Four people, you would say. And then, okay, do you need a cab to go to the uh, movie theater? Okay, then you might say, even, even, okay, yes, go ahead and book a cab. And this is called the conversational AI. Okay, and this was, this is what uh, the next thing that Amazon is pushing towards. And I believe most of the people are pushing towards the conversationally has become pretty um, popular. See, uh, this is where Amazon wants to tap into to get used to their ecosystem. Okay, so they have, um, I mean, they are enabling themselves to each and tapping themselves into each and every section over there. Okay, they might have a collaboration with some of the uh, cab vendors over there. They might have a collaboration with some of the 
um, restaurants over there or uh, some promotional offers over there. They might have a collaboration with uh, some of the, um, the theaters over there, right? So once you enable this, uh, all this conversational, you don't have to go and search in your internet, okay, and look for around and then find, figure out. So you are doing something, Alexa is searching in the back end, and then it is responding you back and you're responding it back. And it, it's just like what, you have a secretary, okay, which is beside you. Okay, this is not a human secretary, it's a machine secretary, which is doing all the job for you. Okay, uh, so in short, that's what Alexa envisions to do, all these Echo devices envisions to do, and uh, it's not too far, uh, it's, it's, I mean, it's very, very near, uh, pretty close over there. Okay, so uh, with this, I'd like to end uh, uh, the brief talk about uh, Alexa. Uh, so, Chengapa, over to you. Please let me know. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Um, and I think uh, this was a very apt session uh, where you started from sharing the uh, subtle nuances between the various echo devices uh, and also uh, provided us that high level working of uh, uh, modeling any of these devices. And also uh, uh, some some points to think on how, how uh, NLP Oops. can can really be um, um, uh, a boon uh, in or rather like having uh, the grip of NLP would definitely help in um, uh, playing around or engineering such products. Uh, so we do have some questions in uh, the chat window by the participants. Uh, so um, um, I would uh, read them for you and then you can uh, uh, answer them. Uh, so sure. the first question goes like from uh, Mr. Abhishek, uh, which says that uh, in your view, uh, what are the skill sets uh, that are required by a budding engineer uh, to be in a team like uh, Amazon Eco Devices, uh, where uh, design thinking uh, and also he wants to like um, uh, what was I probably presume that uh, it would be what were the design thinking approaches which were used. Uh, to get the process and product uh, thinking approach. Uh, if you can share a little bit of insights uh, during your uh, Amazon days, I think uh, that would be uh, good. Sure, see, uh, as is walking through, um, you the designing a device, there are many things over there. Okay, so there's a mechanical engineers involved in there who can uh, design, okay, how well I can design this product. Okay, how can I, uh, I mean, have this product integrity within this? Okay, what is the kind of fixture I can use? What is the kind of plastic that I can use and put together? So although I put together, join together all these uh, divine, all these parts together, still it doesn't, um, it doesn't shake, right? So these are all product design challenges. So, uh, there's a n number of opportunities over there, okay, based on your what kind of uh, expertise you have and what your uh, interest lies in there, okay. So you can have uh, the product integrity over there. You can have, have same, uh, I mean, uh, even the acoustic engineer over there where, I mean, uh, uh, engineers are required, uh, expertise is required to come up with a very well uh, speakers, very well uh, the mics uh, in there. Okay, and then how well it can sound. Okay, you have um, the acoustic engineer over there, which can who makes it possible to sound very good for the device that you have designed. Okay, so it's not so easy task because you have to be very careful on uh, how well you shape your spectrum to give a excellent sound for that particular device. Okay, it takes hours and hours, weeks, months together of effort to come up with such a spectrum. Okay, so, uh, and I believe once you start working on all the different areas, you'll start thinking about the product. Okay, it's not a, uh, not a big deal, I would say. It's just, uh, I mean, uh, number of years you spend in, spend in doing all those things. Uh, it's not going to come overnight. Some people have this um, very natural way of thinking. Okay, some, where they are very gifted in that way, I would say, where they start thinking of product level. But if, even if you're not, don't be disheartened. You'll get there, okay? But start thinking at a bigger picture level. So where this goes, where this goes, why I have to do. So don't just think about, I have to do this, okay? All right, uh, I think. 
Yes. Just one small uh, query that um, what was the thought process for uh, selecting the wake up bird as uh, Alexa? So just uh, why I'm asking this because um, we see that uh, the wake up word is extremely important for uh, processing the commands. So Correct. is there any uh, special thinking which has gone into choosing Alexa? So this, uh, I mean, uh, so where, uh, the, yes, the specialty of Alexa is that, uh, so Ella is a very, I mean, common thing. The uh, sa is there, right? So that's where you are uh, uh, emphasizing something over there, Alexa. So anyone uh, who pronounces there, so which uh, gives some, uh, uh, from, from a backward engine uh, perspective, right? When you design these wake words, you should have very distinct. So I was talking about breaking up into those uh, different parts, right? So at least you should have a three to four uh, different phonemes, okay? When you break it up, then you'll you'll be able to design it in a better way. So Alexa, okay. So these are the three phonemes I would say Alexa, okay. Where I mean, uh, you you go to any regions anywhere over there, so it's um, uh, pretty. Uh, everyone will uh, emphasize on the Xa, right? So, but if you take any other wake word engines, uh, the pronunciations might change. And you have these limitations of having the three phonemes, okay? And uh, designing those backward becomes really difficult. So this came in from Alexandria, okay? So Alexandria, they people, uh, there was a polling that was done internally within Amazon. There are popular uh, keywords that were selected, and uh, uh, I think Jeff Bezos and there are a few other people uh, who felt that, okay, uh, when. Uh, uh, when they're pronouncing Alexandria, so people pretty much pronounce in every region the same way. There was uh, there are slight deviations were there, but that emphasis on the XA was uh, always there with irrespective of the regions. So that's why they ended up going with that way. Thank Did you. I ask your question? Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, sorry, so in case of yeah, just one small thing. So what we have observed, so in uh, Geo also we are working on Alexa enabled devices as you call mm -hmm. them. So okay. what we have observed, like um, I say, I, I want to uh, turn the dimming of my smart bulb to 100%. So what uh -huh. do I say? I say, Alexa, please turn the dimming to 100%. So Correct. I have observed that she changes it to 200%. Not hundred percent. So no, two hundred percent. When I say, she makes okay. it two hundred percent. So how are you uh, planning on you know this uh, no double words like you know T O and T W O. So when we say both, both are same. So when I want to make the dimming hundred percent because there is no concept of making the bulb two hundred percent dimming. Correct. Okay. So, I think, this kind of so, this kind of issues come up. So, what is is there any thing in uh, solving these kind of issues? Like, I think this is uh, updating your uh, the NLU, I guess. I mean, uh, as I was ta talking about making a sense out of it, right? So, you right. have to upgrade your NLU. I mean, uh, uh, logic within there to I mean um, catch these kind of sequences or the use cases. Okay, so. So you know that the dimming, then you then you know you had to break it up over there. So uh, it can be easily taken care of at the cloud level. So I mean in the NLU side. Okay. Yeah, you'll have to reach out to Amazon. So <laughs> on that. Uh, thank you, thank you, sir, for sharing your insights. And uh, again, thank you, Soma, ma'am, for uh, bringing whole new perspective on uh, some of the. Um, issues that you uh, face while working with such uh, devices. Uh, uh, so going ahead, uh, so there is um, uh, another question from our participants, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which goes on like, um, uh, which of these devices are more accurate, uh, Google Home Mini or Alexa? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, what I've seen is that uh, this has been my benchmarking experience. I mean, we. Uh, we were doing all this benchmarking and comparing uh, these devices. Uh, so there are some areas which uh, uh, 
Uh, Google Home Mini was, was doing good. There are some cases which Alexa was also doing good. Echo devices were also doing good, um, especially based on the song voice, I would say. Okay, and uh, this is, uh, but again, um, I've also seen that um, uh, Google Home Mini is, uh, the it's not so base heavy, okay, and uh, compared to some of the Echo devices, and that makes a difference. So it's not apples to apples comparison. I know that the users will uh, do those comparisons between uh, these kinds of devices. Uh, but I mean, we used to keep arguing like uh, even the outputs of both devices are not equivalent. Like the Google Home Mini, uh, it goes up to 90 dB SPL when I measure it at a one meter distance. Okay, but uh, uh, Echo devices goes up to 95 dB. So it's, uh, uh, I mean, high sounding. I mean, it's a loud device compared to Google Home Mini. Okay, so it again, it depends on some of those songs that you measure. So this is a typical case, uh, but uh, pretty much both were doing the same, same, I would say. Thank you. Thank you for uh, sharing that uh, thoughts uh, with us, sir. So the next question is, um, I guess I missed that. Okay, as a computer science student, how does one enter the field of uh, digital signal processing? and sound synthesis and modeling? Good question. You have to study. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> so you have to, yeah. So, I mean, if you're really interested in the company, the SBR you have to study and uh, make a career out of it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So the next question go, uh, uh, which says that it's from Piyush again, uh, and uh, it says, the, how does Alexa handle situations where both the device um, uh, device speaker and the user talk at once? Uh, can it handle full duplex scenarios like these? Uh, let me understand this question well. So where both device speaker and the user talk? Uh, yeah, basically while Alexa is responding to something and uh, the speaker also gives the command at the same time. So how, how does this scenario is handled? <laughs> Yes. yes. So uh, basically, you might you might have seen there is a pause period over there. So always there is a recommendation that once you uh, utter the keyword Alexa, okay, you pause momentarily for few I mean few millisecond, and then I mean start having your utterances, your commands. Okay. So I've I've we used to have those cases when uh, people just used to say Alexa, so turn on the light. Alexa, turn off this light. I mean it never used to respond. <laughs> it was never successful. I, I was talking about, I was showing you about the circular buffer, right? I mean, some of those utterances will just get eaten up within the wake code itself. Okay, so there is a uh, there is a way at procedure. Even my wife used to always do that. I used to ask her to say, okay, can you test this? Then she used to, I mean, straight away say what it's like a one sentence. Alexa, Alexa, can go. Alexa, turn off the light. <laughs> no, it won't work. You should say Alexa, then pause for a pause momentarily, then do it. That's when the device was, and that's how the design, I mean, devices have been uh, designed. Uh, thank you. Thank you for answering that question, sir. So I think uh, uh, the participant didn't get uh, the answer that they were looking for. Uh, so the next question <laughs> is from Siddharth, uh, which says that, uh, can you throw a light on what is the security aspect taken care in terms of privacy as uh, Alexa listens uh, live surroundings? Okay, so going back to the previous question, if I understand, see there is, I mean, uh, the speaker devices, it means that it is playing something, right? Is that what it is? So when it is, I mean, when it is playing something, when you utter a keyword, it does ducks off the volume and then it wakes up. Right. So, um, I, I think uh, probably uh, the participants wants to know more of uh, <clears throat> the privacy and the security aspect uh, as it is listening to the surroundings. If uh, okay. if there is something uh, built onto the device itself, or probably you can share more on that. Correct. So there is a mute facility over there. So there is a uh, there are two kinds of protection. Uh, when you mute the microphone, there's a hardware logic inbuilt over there, okay, which will take out the hardware bias and uh, um, the microphone signal doesn't reach the software. That is one protection. Even, even if there is a 
failure at the hardware detection logic. There is a um, uh, software logic inbuilt over that where uh, the I mean the all the audio buffers are just dropped and it doesn't uh, get processed internally. So there is a um, there is a security um, uh, conformance that uh, every uh, device has to undergo. Even there is a software compliance as well as the hardware compliance, which Alexa, I mean, uh, the Echo devices publishes and they uh, they get certified um, um, in the industry. So it's mandatory that they have to produce those compliance and they have to adhere to those compliance. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for answering all those questions, sir. I don't see uh, any more questions, okay. at least in the chat window. Uh, still. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead, ma'am. I was about to say that uh, if participants have any more questions, I think we can take a couple of them before we wrap up. Uh, you can unmute and ask your questions directly to the speaker. Yeah, so ma'am, ma please yeah. go ahead. So, um, one, one last question. We, we, are, we have been, if you know that in uh, residential IoT, we have some devices like there is a panic button. Uh, so, which is meant to send some kind of alert and uh, help um in case of emergencies so i just wanted to know that is there any skill incorporated in alexa in which we can enable the panic mode and uh, is there any you no know, command wherein you know supposing like i am alone at home and alexa is there with me and i mm -hmm. get into some kind of emergency is there a possibility or something where I can ask Alexa to help me out or send some, you know, like fire or police or anything like that. Is there, is there so, anything that sort? Yeah. Correct. So uh, at least, uh, I mean, uh, in the US, okay, I'm not sure about uh, India. There might be some compliance still going on. So in US, uh, you can have uh, the call 911. Okay, you can as well call any of the hospitals over there. So the Alexa devices are uh, inbuilt with a calling capability also. Okay, so you can call any number or even the 911. And along with that, there is uh, something called the drop in feature. Okay, say you want to um, call any of your uh, friend who is also having an echo device at their home. So what you can do is that um, uh, you can say, uh, Alexa, drop in to my friend, whatever uh, your friend name is. And then without dialing in, so directly, I mean, uh, the other side, um, the device wakes up and uh, whatever you're talking, um, um, the other person will start listening to it. So there have been, um, there were cases when uh, a couple of years back, there was a fire, I think two to three years back, there was a, a huge uh, wildfire in the forest over there and some of the homes were asked to evacuate and there were a few kids okay, who were there at home and father wanted to reach reach out to their kids and the, his dad was in office and uh, he dropped into the device because the kids were busy in, uh, doing something and he just dropped into the device and they could see his dad speaking suddenly on a device and he said, please leave the home, there's a wildfire, okay, we need to evacuate, okay. So things have happened and I, have, I myself have used that feature very well where I was trying to call my sons. Uh, sometimes they were not picking up the phone. I you just drop into the device and you start talking, and they will be surprised. Oh, my dad is great. So it's as good as um, I mean, uh, you can see what your kids are doing also, provided you have opened up your cameras. Can I answer? Thank you so much. Yes, yes, thanks a lot. So I hope in future it will be added in the India uh, Alexa also. So that will I, be a great help. So as I said, I mean, someone asked about those security uh, aspects, right? There's a compliance that, uh, um, I mean, uh, every device has to undergo. In fact, uh, I mean, the devices that gets released to India gets delayed compared to the US because the security compliance in India is much more stringent than US. Okay, because, I mean, they keep adding those compliance, uh, more and more compliance. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Hi, Silas, sir. I would uh, like to ask a question. Yeah, and in fact, the session was an eye opener for me. The small Alexa device has so many brains going in, right from electronics engineers to uh, computers to mechanical engineers. So yeah. I think uh, students would have uh, definitely got lots of insights from you. 
Uh, this is a small academic question from my end. Uh, are mm -hmm. there any platforms available wherein our students can try and test to build a system like this? Not a complete one, probably yes, but can we go ahead uh, and try out a few of the chatbots or say question and answer system, some free flat platforms uh, for the academic purposes? I think there are many uh, open sources available. Um, I mean, uh, uh, Google itself has some of those, uh, even uh, Amazon also has published some of those open sources, I guess. Okay, you can use the Raspberry Pi, okay, to enable some of those things. You can have um, microphone, I mean, some microphone array design and um, uh, sticking on to the uh, Raspberry Pi, or you get those uh, USB microphones also, which you can insert into the Raspberry Pi, and have these small engines working out there. Okay, uh, it can work as just a wakeward engine. Okay, and then uh, and you can have a small some of the smaller commands where you can push onto um, the APIs. So uh, even Amazon provides those APIs where you can integrate with those NLUs, um, the backend Amazon so voice services. The AVS has those APIs. You can integrate with those APIs. Okay, even otherwise, if you want to just have a, um, I mean, uh, just Alexa with the wake word. And uh, in fact, um, Amazon device itself has uh, inbuilt local commands also, like um, increase my volume, okay, decrease my volume. Okay, there are some of those commands which are inbuilt internally. Okay, and uh, you can also those commands also, you can still have it. Yes, uh, thanks for that, sir. I have one more question regarding the processing that happens at the cloud. Uh, mm -hmm. Could you share uh, a little more information on the same? Uh, uh, what what exactly you want to know? Uh, like the NLU understanding thing, the processing, the cloud requirement, or um, uh, say some basics of uh, cloud processing that I want to know so as to go ahead and uh, implement few of the concepts what we are trying to do it in our college i think yeah you can uh, you can refer to the avs apis which uh, i mean uh, uh, which is available okay you people use those avs apis i myself have not implemented those because majority of my i've worked on the audio front end and those uh, uh, the speaker and uh, speaker design systems okay so i myself have not gone into accessing those AVS APIs. I know functionally how it works. So there is the AVS APIs which, which are published and uh, there's a proper documentation from Amazon which is also available uh, to every users. Okay, but I think it is called Amazon Developers Forum, I guess. So uh, you should be able to use that and develop your own skill sets. That's how uh, people end up, um, people develop uh, the Amazon skill sets. Sure, thanks for that insight, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, we have uh, the pleasure of uh, having uh, Dr. Deepa Shinoy, our IEEE Bangalore section chair elect, also with us. And Divya Ma'am is also here, uh, MDC chair. Uh, and uh, I request all the MDC uh, mem members and all the IEEE Bangalore section uh, office bearers and uh, the KLS team to kindly um, turn on their cameras so that we can have a, a group selfie, uh, which can be you know, virtually taken. So request all of you to please turn on the camera and uh, Dr. Sakriya, so all of you please turn on the camera and let us have a, a selfie pic. Uh, um, uh, thanks, yeah. uh, Soma. Uh, yes, so it was a wonderful session. I learned a lot uh, from this session and I'll That's continue. Uh, I'll Google and I'll continue and try to learn more about Alexa. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. So actually, uh, Alexa is uh, like voice assistance and artificial intelligence as per uh, Gartner's uh, hype cycle of 2021. They are at the peak and going to be the um, hot topic for coming future and it is very good for all the students to look forward for a career building in this area. Yes, yes. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, uh, Divya ma'am, uh, you want to uh, uh, share some uh, 
Uh, uh, I have a question. Uh, I think uh, I have not used Alexa. Mm. Alexa, uh, is it, uh, it is, does it cater to local languages also? Uh, uh, the commands, everything is in English. I don't think so. There's, uh, um, I think there have been a latest uh, thing that they had introduced with the uh, Hindi version, I guess. Okay, as far as I know. This is after I, I'm a mood out of Amazon. Okay, I think there is a latest thing which is there in Hindi, as far as I know. Yeah. And extra keyword still remains the same. They haven't changed that. <laughs> okay, Abhishek told that uh, Hindi version is uh, available. Okay, then my information was right because I, I knew that there was a development that was going on after. I mean, I was in US. I, I moved back to India uh, one and a half years back. So okay. there was a development going on and uh, I was not sure if they have rolled it out. I, uh, so we are meeting virtually <laughs> and we have never meet, met actually first time. So nice to meet both of you. Nice to meet everyone here. Yeah, nice to see Abhishek after a long time, Abhishek. We hardly meet physically these days. Yes, good evening, everyone. Yes, ma'am. Uh, can I also ask the other participants also to turn on the video feed? Those who uh, can, please turn on your cameras. Yes, students, could you please do it? And so, ma'am, I'm sorry, I was on mute and I'm trying to express my feelings. <laughs> Definitely, it's a pleasure uh, to get connected in this virtual platform, though not physically. We are trying to, you know, uh, boost our levels coming up with such sessions. In fact, a good uh, start from and it was a nice initiative and Tanishka has also done uh, taken a lot of efforts. So yes, nice, yes definitely. Nice I would like to I think they have prepared their vote of thanks. Tanishka and Harshita, uh, could you go ahead and uh, present your vote of thanks? Uh, yes, ma'am. A very good evening. I Tanishka Patel, the SBMDC chair of IEEE student branch of KLS GIT, would like to take this opportunity to give the vote of thanks. Firstly, I would like to thank Dr. Sapri for the extremely informative talk. I'm sure each one of us has learned something new today and enjoyed being a part of this fascinating session. Let me express my gratitude towards the audience for their attentive listening and cooperation. I'm grateful to doc Dr. J.K. Kittur, Principal, and Dr. S.S. Saraf, HOD EC Department of KLS GIT for their constant encouragement. This event wouldn't have been possible without the guidance and support of Professor Abhishek Deshmukh, Professor Pratijna Ajwan, and members of IEEE GIT. Last but definitely not the least, a big thanks goes to IEEE Bangalore section, Divya MG Joint Director, CDAC, and IEEE Membership Development Committee Chair, Soma Pandey, General Manager, Geo Platforms Limited, and IEEE Membership Development Committee Co-Chair, and entire IEEE MDC for organizing this interesting event at our college. We hope to collaborate with you again in the near future. Thank you. Uh, Divya ma'am, if you are there, uh, you want to uh, take the closing remarks? Yeah, nothing. Yeah. It was a wonderful session as Dr. Deepashana said, and my earnest thanks to uh, Mr. Shailesh. And uh, Shailesh, we'll, uh, we'll reach you again and disturb you for some of your contributions as a, what to say, panel. We are planning to start uh, initiative for the remote and rural engineering college students about mock interview, etc. And we, we feel, yeah. according to, I know, at your bandwidth, we agree. Uh, wherever possible, we please join us and help us. Thank you so much, no, Dr. Silesh. Can you turn on Absolutely. the camera? We will take the selfie once more. You were not there in the previous one. No, my bandwidth is very poor. If I switch on, it will get disconnected. Twice it happened. Ask Changappa. So I am on audio. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Uh, Shailesh, we want to hear more uh, 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 lectures from you, uh, talks from you. Uh, okay. So it was because it was very engaging and uh, very informative. Uh, I will we will reach out to you in near future. No issues, no issues. Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Okay.
it was excellent talk thank you so much thanks thanks a lot thanks everyone yeah thank you thank you all uh, so, so until we next take... weekend yeah, yeah yeah you were saying yeah. something sorry sorry jing <laughs> No, no, ma'am. It's the same thing. So I was just saying, like, until we meet again, stay safe, uh, uh, keep on learning, um, and keep the spirit of volunteering flying high. Yeah. Thank you all. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks, thanks from my end to Soma, ma'am, and Chengapa sir, and the entire team, our uh, speaker for the day, Celeste sir. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Yes. Good night. Good night. Yes. Good night.